Hi guys, Zator here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I mixed and mastered and did everything to my track, uh, Know Your Enemy. Uh, it's a really fun track to make, really enjoyed uh, going through everything. Uh, it was something a little bit different from what I normally do, so it, maybe I approached some of this stuff the wrong way, but I'll just show you uh, how I went about everything. Uh, so this is the, the playlist, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, not actually a lot going on for this track, uh, just a lot of samples. So uh, I'll go go over how I integrated the samples into the track and really made them sound like my own, even though they're all they're all from like the Varian Colossus sound pack, which is probably one of the best sound or sound packs I've ever heard. So let's go ahead and get started here. Clear everything. Um, I'll go over each channel. Just real quick, showing you what I did. Some of these channels are super, super basic because I really didn't change too much about them. But I'll show you what I did and why I did them. So for the first channel here, it's this uh, Varian Horn. And all that, all that I'm doing here... Actually, I don't even have an EQ on it. It's just straight. But I route that into uh, the reverb channel here. Uh, just to uh, just to integrate it with the other sounds, make it make all the sounds work together in the reverb, and that that kind of glued it together. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Actually, go ahead and sort these real quick. Uh, for the second sound, oh, yeah, those are two of the same sounds. I just have them routed to the same channel. Uh, for the second one, we have here is just an impact. It's a pretty low impact, uh, so I, I tried to accentuate the low end uh, when I went in and EQ'd it. It's supposed to sit on the bottom because I'm often layering a whole bunch of different sounds. Oops. If we look at the playlist... Where's the playlist going? There it is. If we look at the playlist here, at the very beginning of the song, I've got a lot of uh, samples just right in here. Uh, what we're hearing is the Varian Boom 9. And I EQ the EQ that so most of the low end comes through, and allow that to work with some of the other some of the other sounds. And that's just going straight out; it's not being affected any in any other way. So then, for sound three, it's another impact. This one's also fairly low. Uh, it's getting more of a boost on the high end, though. I like that little bit of a rumble. As you can see, there's really not much high in there, so I tried to bring all that I could out. It's more of a click, uh, but it really does help the impact. Uh, for sound four, here's a it's just a ambient string sound, and I'm mixing it in a lot with the reverb, which I'll go over uh, in just a few minutes here. Uh, so that get, got mixed with the reverb as well. Uh, I don't even think I'm EQing it. Nope, no EQ there. So we have another one. I actually duplicated some of these sounds and they're used in slightly different ways uh, throughout the track. That one's actually sounds identical. Probably is because I probably just duplicated it for no reason. Uh, now, really the backbone of this track is the massive, massive per, uh, percussion that we get from the sample pack. And that's apparent throughout the entirety of the song, but the very, pretty much the very first percussion that we're hearing is this uh, percussion number seven. And that's uh, not even being EQ'd, but it is being routed into the second reverb send that I have here. Oops. So that's pretty straightforward. So the next sound that we're going to hear is another imp or another percussion section. And this one actually is being uh, EQ'd a little bit. This one I'm taking a little bit of the low end out of uh, to make it work with some of the other percussion in, uh, elements in the track. Uh, since I have those massive uh, impacts everywhere in the track, uh, I really wanted to make sure that the percussion section wasn't overruling everything with its low end. Uh, if we have a bunch of percussion, like if we're layering a bunch of stuff together, uh, then we're going to get 
a ton of rumbly low end, and that doesn't really work a lot of the time. So by making sure that both of these sounds don't have a lot in the low end, we can, uh, we can get rid of that rumble. And you can see that these two sounds actually work pretty well together. They accentuate each other uh, fairly well. And then that, of course, combines with the impacts that I have in the track. And that all that combined with a little bit of reverb really goes a long way. Uh, here we have uh, an atmosphere sound. It's very quiet. Not even uh, EQing it or anything, but that's just going straight into the reverb. It is uh, being mixed a little bit uh, with the dry signal and then the shimmer reverb here. Uh, the next sound that we have is another ambient sound that I I, I liked and I thought it fit pretty well with the original atmosphere. It's again pretty quiet. And I've actually used this in another track. I think that was Electric Valley that I used it in. Yeah, that'd be correct. This is uh this is actually not from the same sample pack. It's from the uh, it's another one of the Varian ones. Uh they're all fantastic, so check those out. Uh, that's not being EQ'd much. It's, actually, it's just being compressed. I'm, wow, I'm actually doing a lot of compression here. Um, as you can see, it's very... If we look at this uh, waveform here, it's very, very dynamic. It's got a lot going on. We have these huge spikes here, which look to be mostly low frequency, uh, but I really wanted to level those out some. It made it a, a lot easier to get the level just right. So... I, I compressed it quite a bit and then uh, threw it into the into the reverb uh, just like everything else is. So okay, so for channel nine, we're getting more percussion. Actually, is that that's two different percussions that I, I mixed basically the same way. Uh, they're getting uh, the low end drop dropped off and a little bit of the high end accentuated, and then just a little bit of compression to level them out. That one I actually used towards the end. And then there's this one, which has a better snap. More, or sounds better in the high end in my opinion. Okay. Get rid of all that. So for channel 10, we have a couple things going on here. And I really liked just the high end on this one specifically, and it, actually on all of these, it worked pretty well. They have a, a little bit of noise, but I think that that meshed pretty well with everything. Uh, oops, if we look at it here, this is the EQ before any reverb or anything, and I'm actually using the secondary reverb for this one. Uh, you can see. So the high end works pretty well, especially when you feed it into the reverb. I don't like adding a lot of white noise to my tracks, so anywhere that I can get a little bit on the high end works pretty well for me. Oh, those are just duplicates of, of themselves. Okay. Uh, for number 11 here, we have another impact. Now this one is really low, and I tried to get rid of some of the mud with it. Uh, it's really rumbly, and I didn't want a whole lot in, the, in this track. I like the very snappy percussion elements that just have a lot of low end, but then there's not much beyond that. Uh, this helped some, but it, it does have some rumble, so the EQ is just to bring out the high end a little bit and cut out those really low frequencies that you don't need. Uh, same goes for this one. And that's kind of how I approach most of the, the EQing in this track. Uh, make sure that there wasn't too much mud and let the elements uh, come through. So that works. If you can even hear that. So then we have uh, a riser, actually. I was trying to figure out how to work in some electronic elements to this. 
Uh, I really wanted it to be something kind of unique, not just a, an orchestral track that had samples everywhere. So I tried integrating some more electronic elements, something that I would throw in like a dubstep track or whatever. And so that is this riser right here. And I have that actually turned down a little bit in the raw mix. The sidechain channel doesn't actually have anything on it. I just labeled it like that because it's how I would normally process a track. But it's going a lot into the uh, shimmer reverb, which really goes a long way to help level it out because a, a lot of that wobbling doesn't work too well for this style of track. But since I threw it heavily into the reverb and then brought the levels back, you get more of the reverb than the actual sound itself, which just really helped not make it super stand out, which is really what I wanted. It's supposed to be subtle. And then to also help with the subtlety of it, there's also a secondary riser here, which is that uh, next channel. Pretty straightforward, just regular risers. Those are from Cymatics. And when you layer them, they sound pretty nice together. Do I not have anything in channel 17? Oh, I do. This is just audio. If we come over here to channel 17, I have a huge serum. So this was actually interesting. This was a sound that I, uh, this was a sound that I had in there in the track before, uh, before I removed it. Well, I said I removed it. I left the, the preset in there. I wasn't quite getting the sound I wanted. I like, I kind of like the art, but it really did stand out and didn't quite fit with the track, even though it, it sounded okay. Um, so I just left that in there uh, for 18. Here's one of the, one of the things that I love doing, just absolutely massive chords. And of course those have a ton of reverb on them. Uh, look at that. It's getting driven actually a little bit harder into the, into the reverb. And that's actually just a, a harmer patch with the unison values turned up way high on both of them. And a little bit of harmer, a little bit of asymmetry. And I don't really think I'm messing with much else. Uh, the reverb really helped carry that sound. The really actually, it's really a messy, messy sound. If I turn that off. Like that would not stand on its own very well. Uh, so I, I put a lots of reverb on it, send it to the background, and here's how it sounds in, in the song. Play the actual chords here. All right. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, now for, where is it? That's channel 18. So let's go to 19. More percussive elements. I use a lot of percussive elements. And they're all mixed in generally the same way, so I'm not going to spend too much time on any one. Oh, where's... There we go. I took almost all of the bass out of this one. Uh, I think it was because it was uh, mixing with another one. Might have been... That's, that's six. What's the name of that one? Percussion number eight. We may have already actually gone over that one. Uh, but it's basically the same as any other percussive element, just slightly different to give a little bit of a difference. All right, 20, we have just this uh, cashmere impact. And if you notice, this one actually has a little bit of an attack, or a little bit, has a lot of attack on it. So you can see where I used that one in the track 
I had to time align it so we get the impact coming through. And that's across all of them. You can see here where I'm using them. So that's pretty straightforward as well. It's, mostly it's just a lot of samples, just EQ'd and lots of reverb. Okay, and then most of the samples continue through like that. Uh, there's another ambient sound that you would probably recognize. I think we just went over that one though. One of the things that I did that was uh, actually kind of interesting with that one specifically was t uh, down-tuned it. I think it... No, I didn't down-tune that one. I just faded that one in. There was one that I down-tuned. Where was that? Yeah, there we go. So we have the... Oh, right. no, that's the shriek. Uh, the original horn at the beginning of the track. That one I took and down-tuned. Uh, I down-tuned it by time-stretching. So I don't, I don't actually know that... That shouldn't change the pitch, but... It depends on what, uh, what kind of settings you use. And then that... All of those... That's basically what, it, what all the mixing was. There's one more thing that was actually the biggest challenge to mix, and I'll go over that now. Uh, it's this. Uh, it's the bass line in the track. Uh, this is actually a preset from Seamless R that I attempted to duplicate and had a hard time with, even though he showed me every every setting to change in Serum. I just... The version I came up with didn't work right. He has a video on it. It's pretty recent. This is the Noisia track, or Noisia remix of Nothing Matters. And if you listen to it... It actually sounds kind of bad on its own. Uh, I'm distorting it even more than it is already in the in Serum itself, EQing it. Uh, and that's where some of the sub comes from. As you can see, I notched out everything above like 50 hertz pretty aggressively and then left the sub in. And then accentuated the mid-range to give it that honky tone, which normally doesn't sound that great, but sounds out really well in the mix. I dropped off some of the high end to make sure it's not fizzing or adding too much noise. Uh, and then compressing it, like lots of compression, lots of that. I have, I didn't do anything in the multiband, but just uh, the mastering, uh, the, or the master compressor, I pushed it pretty hard into that and then enhanced the stereo field. If you notice actually, not very many of the sounds have the stereo field enabled down here, but this one specifically, I widened the stereo image and that helped, helped it sit well in the mix without overpowering everything. So that's most of the mixing. Uh, everything else basically comes down to EQing it just a little bit uh, to get it, get it just right. And then the biggest element when it comes to mixing is turning the volume down. <laughs> Um, I basically just control all and dropped the faders back because if you have all of the faders normalized to zero, then you're going to get a lot of signal going into your effects channels. And sometimes the plugins that you're using won't know what to do with like massive, massive volumes. So like if you're driving a sound really hard into a, say a, uh, a reverb or a phaser or whatever, you're going to clip the... If, if the plugin is poorly coded, you're going to clip it. So basically, I just brought everything down and uh, basically kept it within reason. Um, if you actually look at the sidechain where all of these sounds are routed into, I'm, I'm well beneath 0 dB for everything, really. Even though there's a bunch of sounds being combined... I'm still lo below 0 dB. The same goes for everything else here. 
This makes sure that I'm not overdriving the plugins. There's not extra processing being done. It just lets the plugins shine through in the way that they were supposed to. Now, good plugins, it won't really matter. I mean, uh, FL Studio is a 32-bit DAW, so you can drive the volume as high as you want, and it won't really make a difference. Uh, but I just found that it sounded a bit better if I dropped all of the levels back. And you can actually just control all. Well, not you can't actually control all. You can control select all of them, and you can adjust with ratio which can be really helpful because then you don't lose your mix even if you're adjusting the volume for all of them, which is uh, what I did a, a couple of times. Now, that's how I mixed everything, but what about the two huge elements, the reverbs? Uh, normally, I would just have one reverb, but these two reverbs are so far apart from each other that I didn't really feel the need to, to just have one. Uh, normally, if you have two reverbs, you're going to get like a lot of mess and just a lot of phasing with each other. Uh, but these two are not at all the same. If we listen to the shimmer... Well, actually, let me find a sound with shimmer on it. That sounds absolutely crazy and huge. And that's what I love about Valhalla Shimmer. It doesn't sound natural, but it doesn't need to. It sounds weird it sounds out there and that's the sound that i was going for especially with the inspiration for this track uh, so i basically just set the knobs so it, it was a huge ambient sound uh, put the mix to, to full and mixed everything in the in the mixer here and then i'm eqing it to drop off the low end because because of how much low end there actually is in this track you really don't want to overdo it when it comes to the reverb so i backed off on the on the low end for this and then it, it turned out just fine so no complaints uh the second reverb is epic verb if you don't know what this is this is a free plugin just google it uh one of the best sounding uh drum reverbs i've ever heard i'd throw this on any any drum kit no problem it's got a lot of different controls and my personal favorite is the hall setting uh with a slightly longer uh decay uh, so, three point or three point three seconds. Pretty subtle, uh, but it works well, especially when you uh, compare it or when you add it with the shimmer. So we'll go ahead and uh, unmute both of those. Either way, they, they're not really occupying a lot of the same frequency space. As you can see, that the mid-range is very toned down on the epic verb, and the high end is boosted uh, to get some of the detail from it, but the shimmer has a lot more of the mid-range with only a little bit of the high end boosted. So this allowed them to occupy slightly different frequency ranges and work together really, really well. And I use the, uh, the epic verb a lot on the impacts to give it a room sound rather than a huge ambient sound if that makes sense so there, i'm trying to use them for two different purposes and it works in this case uh, but it probably wouldn't work in every case if i was doing a huge crazy dubstep banger uh, i would definitely not do that so that so that's most of the mixing uh, let's get on to the master where we get a lot of fun this is where most of the sound of the track comes from that in Sorry, it really glues everything together. All of the samples and everything are from different packs or whatever, and I didn't make them. They don't sound like I made them. So you really have to do a lot to get it to, to get them all to fit right, and especially to make them fit with your sound. With that in mind, we have a lot going on. I'm not doing any parallel EQing, compression, or whatever. It's all very basic stuff. Uh, this is just a... It's not a low pass or high pass. It's just a a dip in the low end. So building up to the what I would I guess call the crescendo or drop, but there's a couple of them. I drop off the low end, and that just uh, makes it more impactful when the bass drums hit in the drop. It's pretty simple, straightforward. It's nothing complicated, and that's more of an effect than any, than anything. 
Now we're getting into the real mastering. This is also a, another plugin from the same guys who did the Epic Verb pack. Uh, this is Tesla SE. It's a saturation plugin. It really doesn't do that much, but it adds a, a little bit of distortion to your sound. And I find that it works really, really well for gluing all of your sounds together. Since it's distorting them together, it really just works to sell that everything's working together. Oh, it's not that noticeable, and I really do not have it turned up that much, and you really don't want to. I didn't want it, it, the song to sound distorted, but I just wanted it to work together better. And I think that it was more pronounced in the high end uh, than anything else. If I turned it off, there wouldn't be much of a difference, but with it there, it's a little bit nicer in my opinion. So if we play the track... you do get a lot more coming through. And there is some uh, loudness biasing there, so if I had the level set appropriately, uh, where they were the same, it wouldn't be that big of a difference. There is a little bit more high end, uh, but really is not much there. It's mostly the fact that when you turn it on, it makes everything louder, that makes it sound that much better. Um, so then the next thing that I would use is this, another plugin from the same guys who did Tesla and Epic Verb, uh, Thrill Seeker XTC. Just fantastic for doing whatever it is it does. I think it's a sonic maximizer, but I'm not 100% sure I didn't read what it actually does. <laughs> but I threw it on there, was messing with it, and I was like, oh, wow, this sounds kind of good. Uh, it's kind of an EQ, but kind of a saturation engine, sort of like Tesla. So it's Tesla with more control, I guess. But basically, I just... I turned up all of the volumes to 10, mute or soloed them so I could hear what was going on and set the frequencies, dropped them back down to, to two. So what I would have done is turn it all the way up and I'll let you hear that. You can hear that coming through on the mid range. Or not the mid-range, on the low end, sorry. And I turned it up to 10, set the frequency that I found that worked really well for it, and uh, then I dialed it back. And the frequency I used is like 100, 125, which is kind of where the rumble sits, but it works okay because of, because of all of the EQing that I did to remove a lot of that. And since I'm only boosting it up to like 2, there's not really a lot going, or it's not boosting a lot. Same thing for the mid, same thing for the high. I really boosted the high because um, some of the finer details of the track were, were there. So here's what the track sounds like with and without it. Not a huge difference, and it looks like I actually may have set the levels even properly. Uh, and then it's got a couple more settings, but I have no clue what Mojo does, so I just turned it off. A uh, full mix, and beyond that, there's not much there. I just think it sounds pretty good. Um, doesn't change a whole lot. Couldn't really tell that much of a difference, but when it does work, it works pretty well, so I like it. Uh, the next thing that we have is the EQ that I've started using on every single track that that I do. This is, I just throw this on there. It is a boot EQ Mark II by the same guys who did all the plugins before this. Uh, Tesla, Thrill Seeker, Epic Verb. Uh, really, you should look these up. They're free. Just go check them out. But I go through, since it's not a graphical equalizer, I can't see what frequencies I'm, I'm changing. I basically turn up the, the volume on each of the EQs to the maximum and then find the frequency that I want to to adjust. And then I back it or back the volume back off to where I think it works. Which when I do that, I tend to just boost frequencies. I don't really turn any down, but I find that that works um, works fairly well and I can always turn it down later. Uh, 
And then the other thing that I really, really like about this plugin is that it's got tube emulation. I love the way vintage tubes sound. So uh, basically you just turn it on, uh, turn the tube on, and you can select from vintage or modern. Vintage sounds pretty good, but I was going for a really modern orchestral track. So it worked well here. You can turn up the drive a little bit so you, uh, drives it into the tube, get a little bit of that tube saturation. And from there, not much. Uh, it's n the EQ sounds out more than the, than, the, than the tube does. You can turn on and off the tube and there's not a huge difference, but the EQ is definitely there. So I'll let you hear that. And because of the way I've EQ'd things, I think it just brings a little bit more of the detail to the front. Um, some of the frequency ranges that have most of the detail for like the bass and some of the high ends, like the percussion elements, that just comes through a little bit more. And so that's why I really enjoy this plugin. And it just sounds fantastic on anything I put it on. It's kind of hard to mess up the sound with, with this plugin, which is one of the things that I really like. Uh, so the... Final thing from the same guys that made all of these plugins is my mastering compressor. Uh, this is just a fantastic sounding compressor. Can't recommend it enough. Um, Density Mark III. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I don't know what the range does exactly. I think that's compression ratio, but it doesn't act like ratio. So it's a little bit weird. I tried reading some of the documentation on it. Still couldn't get it quite but i do know what drive does that turns up the volume into the compressor timing adjusts how fast the compressor reacts and everything and then makeup gain um, really you just want to dial in about four decibels of gain reduction and bring up the makeup a little bit and you're good and it sounds fantastic it does have a limiter function but i just use it for the compressor pretty much exclusively now one of the things that does make a huge difference is this color knob here if you turn it all the way to the right, I find it has a more warm sound. A little bit more of the mid-range is accentuated. Uh, if you turn it all the way to the left, it's more of a cool sound. Uh, it's more focused on the low and high end, something that would sound good on headphones. Uh, so I just turned it all the way to the right because it was really the style that I was going for and just let it roll and it worked fantastic. Uh, here's what the track sounds like with and without it. So I basically throw this on every track, like uh, like I do with the boot EQ. These two plugins go on everything that I do now, and they work out fantastic. They've really helped. I started using them with Bottle Shaman, so I've been using them for just a little bit of time now. But basically, I'll throw them on anything now, and since it's more difficult to mess up the sounds with, I can more of the time get a better sound, which is nice. But beyond that, those are the third-party plugins I use. From there, I just use... FL Studio to EQ everything, boosting some of the low end uh, and some of the high range, and compressing it very lightly. Not a lot of compression going on here. I really didn't want to get an over compressed sound. I really wanted everything to come through cleanly. And so, very light compression just to level everything out. And then I go into the limiter, uh, which does not have much going on. There is actually one automation clip. Uh, I may have... Oh yeah, I removed that one. Uh, basically, I was automating the volume a little bit at one point, but I removed that, and now it's just a little bit of a gain reduction. I really wanted to make sure that the limiter wouldn't be doing anything. I didn't want to compress it even more than it was already being compressed from all the saturation and... and mastering EQs and compressors and everything. 
I tried to leave it as clean as possible going into the final compression and EQing. The only other thing that I did when it comes to these uh, to these plugins was increase the stereo spread. Uh, this is the stereo spread knob that you can use on high, uh, low, mid, high, and master. For the low, I pushed the uh, some of the bass frequencies into the middle, uh, prevented it from getting really muddy. If you stereo your bass too much, you're going to get really weird sounds, which can work, but not in this case. Uh, mid and high are both being uh, separated more, which really does help make it sound like you're in the place listening to these instruments. It's not just pl being played over speakers or headphones. It widens what you're listening to and sounds fantastic. If I full center the track, it sounds pretty boring. And same goes for full stereo. It starts to sound more weird than boring. It's just to sound a little bit fake, and I don't quite like that. So that's how I mixed and mastered I Know Your Enemy. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will be happy to answer anything.